actually the exam how it is designed uh, is if, if you might be having already some experience in certain domains and in certain domains you, you do not have enough uh, experience or knowledge Hello everyone, welcome to Sisa This Much. This is Aditya and today we have with us Ravi who has recently qualified his Sisa certification. Hello Ravi, uh, welcome to our YouTube channel and first of all heartiest congratulations for the youth success. So uh, can you please introduce yourself, your background and what made you choose this particular course, this particular certification? Hello, Aditya. Thank you for your kind words and appreciation. Um, yeah. and, and then uh, I have an interest and I have also worked as a uh, added skills on the certifications related to like security, cyber security, infosec. So these domains I have been working uh, uh, for not as a 20 years, but uh, three to five years, I've got some experience on that, where I help my previous organizations uh, achieve their uh, security certifications. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I would like to add one question here, since you are, uh, you, you were working as a software engineer first, and then you know, you, uh, you also have your PMP certification with you. So, uh, like, do you think is there any opportunity for people who, who are currently working as project managers? Uh, or, you know, they are already PMP certified, you know, so uh, can they also think about you know, getting this certification, CISA, uh, people who are working in uh, software development, you know, as a software developer. Uh, so, so can they also, you know, uh, look for uh, having opportunities after getting this certification? Yeah, definitely. There are certain domain areas in, uh, say, like we have many IT companies. There are a, a set of uh, section or a units, a business units known as security projects. So there specifically, uh, you are both PMP and CISA would be like a combination. Primarily, they execute security projects uh, related to the software development, uh, uh, privacy controls. So certain softwares are built towards that. So if they have this uh, specific uh, requirement there where uh, they they need to have a regular project manager but added a, a, any CISA or a primarily equivalent to the CISSP or CISM so and when they mention that they do not specifically ask only for CISA they'll give a broad range of two three CISA CISSP um so these uh, type of skills yeah but for auditing for auditing uh, yeah this is the only gold standard uh, presently yeah. so there is no other option to get uh, CISA for if you're like into the auditing and all that but uh, as a security um, consultant or a security advisor or security project managers yes there are definitely uh, uh, some avenues uh, yeah, yeah. this is something which i also always say you know like if you talk about security certification you will find so many certifications in the market you know uh, uh which, which, I, which is given by different different bodies like isc square is there isaka is there you know uh, ec council is there There's so many bodies are there but when it comes to audit certification so only isaka is issuing this you know uh, which is the CISA certification so uh if you if you talk about audit you don't have any option this is the only course so you know you can understand how important or how valuable this certification is okay and also <clears throat> as a project manager since you you also have lots of interactions with auditors you know so <clears throat> do you think it, it becomes important uh to also get understanding what auditor expects from us from 
project managers or the entire team entire audit entire management so you get that idea after getting this certification okay so this is what auditor expects from us so does it help you in the in that area as well yes definitely actually the the mindset of uh, sisa or isaka how it is set or how do you think like an audit primarily it is the risk based approach uh, which is always there in the mind so so they know that what if, if this is not happening or what if this happens that may not be known fully to the auditees but they know uh, like what can go wrong or is it being complained or not so they, so they always think of uh, what can happen if uh, a, a, a something is non conformance so they have that uh, you have to think of uh, somewhat in the negative and then um, take the evidences uh, to actually evaluate them whether uh, they are falling in line with the confirmation to the confirmation mm -hmm. level if they find any uh, and also the observations uh, the the minor the major the critical there are various levels uh, of uh, of a non conformance so it can be advisory it, it is a must to have it is a need to have so all these are various kinds of uh, these are all based on the risk so based on that the auditor may feel that even though it looks very simple but this is a major or uh, even though you are all worried about this but actually this is not a, a big effect uh, it is not a major uh, drawback it can be improved so so there are certain uh, risk based mindset is there so based on that they will be uh, usually forming their opinions or questions uh, where to actually uh, focus more Correct. these are yeah yeah okay thank you for that <clears throat> detailed explanation so my next question to you is uh, okay how much time did it take for you to finish your this certification sisa from the scratch till uh, you know qualifying it or or is it something like you you are uh, always had this plan to get this certification done and you are studying since long back so so uh, you know when was this certification introduced to you and when you started studying for this exam uh, this was first introduced to me around 2016 uh, when it was in a paper based format uh, so we have to like uh, we don't have the choice of writing the exam on you as we wish and there are certain dates where they open the applications and you have to submit the application so one or two times i tried at that time to manually uh, write the but uh, we didn't materialize maybe i am having other priorities uh, the pmp certification is a higher the highest priority for me Uh, so there, then uh, we have to write uh, that as the first certification. So then I did that, and then I went ahead with uh, the Indian Patent Agent uh, registration. So I completed that around twenty twenty June period uh, when everything was, uh, you know, more focused towards cyber security. Um, the, the infosec domain is also. growing exponentially it's not the old tenuous back simple audits like now the threats are more the risk is more so i've seen lot of buzz and and then i referred back to isaka by the time they changed the exam formats and yeah. uh, they now the online materials they are all available in pdf and everything so then i started um, uh, okay uh, i i have to do this but uh, where but because i am not a full time uh, uh, practitioner on this or i have some knowledge which i gained during my previous uh, domain uh, for five other uh, uh, through the experience but domain 1 and 2 i absolutely we do not have much uh, confidence so then i thought of uh, let me take a slow approach and uh, June twenty twenty, I first registered my seriousness by getting the membership of Isaka. Then I studied all the various articles and everything which they give us, uh, downloaded that, 
uh, and then I took one official training from Isaka Chennai chapter where they were conducting a, a Saturday and Sunday coaching. So that I took for about uh, six weeks and they can even is very crisp and uh, but it is in a very uh, dry again it is up to the it is an isaka material they have officially and so they have trained us on that uh, well while doing this then i thought yes i should register for the exam because you won't get seriousness unless you you, you commit to that you should have some a bit of nudge or a pinch then on jan 31st i just paid the fees uh, because you get discount when you are an ISACA member. Please, everyone, please remember. If you go directly, the fees is high. But if you go through uh, ISACA member, you get a discount. So then uh, I have applied, purchased that discount. And now I have a 365 days. So let me take the most out of it. I'm in no hurry. So then uh, I have studied for a few months. And... Uh, uh, there will be a break because we are working continuously on the uh, software, regular job. So then again, uh, slowly when the time was nearing, I have to give the exam. So there is no option. They said that you can not uh, beyond, uh, move beyond 365 day limit. So if you don't give the exam, uh, you have to forfeit the fees for for any reason. So then I thought like, okay, let us place uh, ourselves in a position where there is no escape. The, the, the date is already uh, last day, two days before. So you, you have to prepare. I have already put a date which cannot get postponed now. So at least four months before months before. I put a date as the last. So there's no other last after that. There is no other yeah. option. Yeah. There is no other option. Yeah, okay. um, sometimes we get excited and I think like, hey, preponing is there. I can prepon maybe one month ahead and write it. Oh, okay. But again, like, wait, wait. Practice. Why, why do you write? Okay. You're not going to gain anything or yeah. by giving and one month in advance. So like that, I used to slowly study uh, because uh, I have classes and I just cannot read uh, the, the volumes of the voluminous books which are there prescribed by Isaac. So then I started my approach was threefold. That means audio, visual, and then reading. So I mean, this is also a technique where uh, we cannot observe everything by uh, one medium. You cannot read 100%. You cannot uh, get 100% audios only. You cannot get uh, videos 100%. Uh, uh, nothing is going to like work if you take only. So for that, I have divided like some audios, some, some video, more some graphical, some reading material. So when I am using this as like supplement knowledge, but the syllabus is covered, Every, everyone is covering 100%. All videos I have seen of you, all the books I have read. But when I am taking this approach, I am re re able to retain um, the concepts very, very much, very strong. So if your videos help me, uh, because if you see my uh, journey, uh, the learning curve is it's too uh, long. It's years it is crossing 2020, 2021, I mean 21, 22, 23. But uh, uh, it, it helped me to retain the knowledge. I would say it's your videos are like absolutely awesome. Like I, I can sit uh, one or two hours and see the videos. I do also travel a lot on weekends. So the mobile like, okay, there is a train travel tonight. So let me cover another two, three uh, units or chapters. Then I used to listen on the mobile. So it was, uh, I was shifting that way. And then once I'm 
confident, understood what to do. Then I go to the particular section, 4.2, 4.3, then review the CRM. So I read the CRM in full, but uh, I'm, I'm reading it after the understanding to see what I'm missing out. Are there any other questions which are covered in that content to make myself assured that Yes, I am learning and I, I am also reading the CRM man. But for generally for auditors uh, who are already experienced in this, 100% uh, they need not go through because uh, they have already that, uh, they would have referred uh, this content in a, any other forms also, like that through their trainings and what they are doing. But if someone is coming with absolutely uh, uh, no experience much in IT and no experience in audit also, then yes, they have given a year time. Uh, that means Isaka thinks one year is the time, at least uh, a maximum. But it may not be the true case. It can be like six months, but they give the time period because of the uh, season. Some seasons uh, you are on travel, you won't be studying any so they have took that approach. If there are at least six months, uh, if you don't have experience, uh, you should cover all the concepts uh, very much in detail because they are new. Um, but for experience, yeah, I think three to four months, uh, it's part of their uh, daily job. So definitely they would get uh, uh, comfort while reading the which are the easiest chapters. Okay, yeah, I understood your uh, all the points and thank you for explaining everything in detail, uh, you know, uh, explaining your entire journey, you know. So, uh, and I also agree with this uh, thing that, you know, like you have to keep a mindset that you want to give the exam within the next four months or six months, whatever. And for that, it, it becomes very much important at times to actually, uh, you know, register for the exam. Otherwise, what happens is that if we don't have that goal, like, you know, when to give the exam, so, you know, we may, we may not study, you know, very sincerely. So, yeah, so this, this, this becomes very much important for everyone, you know, and, and honestly, everyone are working. So, you know, even you have a lot of hectic, I'm, I'm sure you, you must be having a lot of hectic schedule with, so, so, you know, it, it, it also becomes difficult at times to manage both the things, you know, because you have to work also, you have to study also, you have your family also. So everything is there, you know. So, yeah, I, I understood, uh, you know, your entire uh, this thing. And okay, so my next question uh, to you is, uh, I think you have already explained that, but again, you know, uh, I, I'll ask you about this thing. So how important you feel like, you know, understanding the, concepts deeply you know in order to clear this exam because you know at times you know some people feel that you know okay so these certifications two months three months you know these duration of two months or three months or four months you know it sounds very less but you know when it comes to opening the materials going through the lectures solving the question answers studying doing revision you know, giving the unit test, mock test and all those things. I, I'm sure that, you know, it is not as easy as what it sounds, right? So, uh, yeah. So, because this is something, you know, which is again, you know, so, so what do you think? Like, you know, uh, I mean, understanding the concepts deeply, does it help in clearing the exam in the first attempt? Like, you know, how much important is it? Or, you know, can we just open the book and can we just, you know, go through the question answers, but, and, uh, and, you know, can we just uh, make sure to clear this exam in first attempt just by having only a uh, uh, one time uh, studying and going through the book and not uh, giving time for the revision, not understanding the concepts deeply. So I just want to know your opinion on this thing. So what exactly you feel the importance of uh, you know, studying deeply, understanding the concepts and also the revision process? Yeah, <clears throat> actually the exam, how it is designed uh, is if, if you might be having already some experience in certain domains and in certain domains, you, you do not have enough uh, experience or knowledge. 
so the the reason you have to study is you have to hold your ground on the areas which you are strong and also you should do a decent uh, performance on the domains which uh, you are not at strong so the the scoring pattern it it really helps you when you are strong in at least two domains it, that can really like uplift that total score so even if you do like averagely uh, then uh, it will help you in covering all the averages uh, to, to to the level that you passed so you should study deep in the areas which you are already strong so don't uh, leave that out because that's going to help you uh, uh, bring the scores up in, at the levels which you are not uh, uh, well up to like that's not your prior uh, like job or you haven't uh, encountered any of those uh, experiences so, and one more thing is you can definitely uh, you cannot score uh, very high in all the domains in which you do not know so the domains which are uh, most likely you have a like we have two types of background generally the chartered accountancy and so people coming from there they should hold on to their domain areas score very high um, i would say like 650 plus uh, uh, that should be their target so even if they know the concepts because it will help them in four and five domains so even if someone is not getting 600 or 500 in those domains um, it will help in the overall score yeah. So yes, you you study deeply in which you are strong. You you cannot make any mistakes there because that's going to help the total score. And then if you are very uh, very much you know new or you do not have enough experience say in domains like domain three or domain four or domain five, yes, you should uh, study. You should understand the concepts what what it is you should do uh, at least get a pass marks that's 450 or 420 around 400 is also okay but provided you excel in the other domains and it is vice versa for it and non-it those who are coming very strong in domain 5 and domain 4 they should hold on to their ground do not neglect uh, since we are because your score will help if you get less in domain one and two because you are already uh, an experienced professional in this so you should exploit that uh, uh, chance the score very high here right. um, you will you will get some definitely less score only in the other domain but uh, understand the concepts and all that Correct, correct. Yeah, I, I actually uh, fully agree with, you know, the you should have a strategy actually because this is in, uh, at the end of the day, you want to clear the exam, right? And, you know, you have to build a strategy like where can I get more score and, you know, which area I'm not uh, having any expertise in. Okay, so there I can, even if I score less, it's fine. But if I have experience, if I have expertise in a, in a, in a specific domain, I need to score a lot of marks in that particular domain yeah yes yes definitely your domain too is it's really a good course it is uh, and it's free also so just i'll just tell my audience that i got 695 in that so 695 that really, wow. yeah i got 695 which is about the four feet so it really helped in in getting the other domains which um all, all are not 600 so it, it definitely lifts up the total score there and and honestly if you ask me you know uh there are so many certifications you know for it but most of the certification they they are focused in on a specific area but this is the only certification you know where if you look straight from domain one you enter domain five you will find that there are so many, you know, each and every domain is a specific, you know, specific, you can say industry or a specific profession by itself, you know, domain five, it, it is as 
you know security is is, is altogether a, a specific industry domain for again domain 3 again you know you, you are already uh, in experience in domain you have your or expertise you have in domain 3 domain 2 again governance domain 1 audit so each and every domain you know is it is it by itself is a you know uh, uh, a niche by okay so it, it it becomes like very difficult you know for for anyone to have understanding about each and every domain okay it, it is impossible honestly it is impossible because you know you might be having experience in security but you might not have be having experience in domain one auditing or governance okay you might be having experience in audit but you might not be having experience in domain four and domain five you might be having experience in domain three like since you you, you are having okay you are you are, you are very experienced so you have multiple domains experience but but many people for for, for them Okay, having experience in all the domains is quite difficult. And this is the, and why we have so many domains. The reason is that we are going into the organization as an auditor. This exam, the primary focus is that you, you they want to, you know, uh, they want to make you a good auditor. So that's why they expect from you to have understanding, knowledge about each and every domain. Otherwise, you, you will not see any certification having you know syllabus so in depth okay or 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 you know having so vast uh, you know varieties of domains and you know varieties of topics but this is the only course i have seen and this is the reason you know so i really uh, you know like whatever he has just spoken the entire strategy you must have a strategy in your mind and that's how you going to clear the exam in the first attempt okay so thank you and also uh, any last tips you know you would like to give to our future CSI aspirants who are watching this video? Uh, yeah, um, this is the best time, 2023. Go for it. Uh, every five years, Isaka changes the patterns and uh, if seeing on the feedbacks which will be given uh, while uh, even after the exam. Who knows? They might come up with an IT uh, CISA auditor and a functional auditor anything can happen and you can get restricted yourself to an area of uh, you know half the current niche skill set so yeah after five years it will change so maybe they we don't know they may put negative <laughs> marking negative, also. Negative also, yeah, so we don't know the concepts or they may give multi-response uh, which is a very challenging uh, you, you select two options or more yeah. options so this is the correct time um, uh, go for it there is a lot of demand there is only 90000 sisa professionals worldwide that's the isaka's statistics from last month so it's very less so it's less than 1 lakh uh, of the entire world it is. yeah so go for it and also one suggestion is do not take uh, exam online proctor uh, register always yourself uh, with a, uh, I would say the partners or the yes, exam yeah. centers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go to the test center and please write your exam. Do not write, uh, I, I mean 99 percent, please do not write it uh, on proper because it is a lot of uh, challenge mentally. There is a lot of challenge uh, on, on us to to not violate uh, anything you cannot even move your head and this and that uh, areas you won't get a break uh, but in the test center you can get a break so there are certain psychological factors also so go to the test center maybe right on a sunday or any holiday because your mind will be totally free and keep an exam date ahead like four months uh, try not to postpone it and then keep your progress Particularly up. Oh, thank you thank you so much for joining with us and sharing your experience in detail giving giving lots of strategies and tips and tricks thank you so much thank you very much sir it's my pleasure i'm also your student so everyone uh, i would just like to add that the course is really awesome uh, if you want to have the concepts very detailed uh, and in a very simple way 
just please uh, try out the domain two and and the other domains as well. It really help me the domain two. I I'm giving like hundred uh, percent credit to the uh, CISA this month's uh, score, and I got a six ninety five, <laughs> which I thought of uh, doing it averagely. But I, I, since I read it very much many times, so it really helped. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I wish good luck to all the aspirants.